Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, Joffrey, how would I know? Just say uh, yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so welcome to this special hangout. Um, so, uh, as most of you know, the situation in Catalonia has become a lot worse over the days, the last few days. It uh, escalated very quickly after they had, they were voting on their independence and there was an overwhelming majority who wanted to have an independence away from Spain. And, um, uh, and but as we all know, it's difficult to exit from conventional nation states because they like to keep control, to put it bluntly. Uh, so we proposed another solution to create uh, a new Catalonia. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, Joffrey, I would like now. Sorry about this. So uh, we have with us Eric, who is in Catalonia right now. Um, Joffrey, can you please send Eric the link so he can join? And he also have with him a couple of uh, Catalonian activists who, who's been working very hard on making an independent Catalonia. So tonight we're going to talk about how to basically make it, but without having to vote or to ask anyone for permission to claim our liberties and live a serene life. Um, Joffrey, can you please invite her? Like Hold on a second, please bear with us. Okay, well, what I recently in the link, maybe you can um, say something about the situation in Catalonia for a second, Joffrey. So, uh, we have with us uh, Eric, who is in Catalonia right now. Um, Joffrey, can you please send Eric to me so he can join me? And he also have with him a couple of uh, Catalonian activists who's been working very hard on making an independent Catalonia. So tonight we're going to talk about to make it yep that's right so we have eric with us now eric and you just came back from the protest so how are things on the ground yeah so it's, it's uh, can you hear me yes okay um so maybe you can even hear it from here like right now it's actually the peak of the demonstration it was actually really hard to get from from the main square to my place because all the streets are full like uh, people are going crazy. It's it's almost impossible to get through. Is it good crazy or bad crazy? Um, it's it's like um, let's say the center of the independista movement of the independence of Catalonia. It's in Girona, and um, all people come from like all over the region to this town today. But also in uh, other places like in Barcelona, and Tarragona, and Lleida, like people are uh, demonstrating everywhere today. Um, one sec. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that my uh, friend, who is actually also quite involved in the movement, is also coming to the hangout. Okay, so while you um, check on the technicalities, I will do a quick introduction of you. So, Eric is a Vietnamese ambassador. You I've been with us since uh, the early the start. Okay. And uh, Hi. the entire ambassador network and embassy network and have lived in Spain for the last few years and speak fluent Spanish and speak and very engaged in various experiments, whether Physically or technology. Yeah. So, Eric, would you mind? Yeah. So, the, the, this is my friend Mark. 
Um, she was involved on uh, October 1st um, during the yes. votes of the independence of Catalonia and uh, um, maintaining the online security of the referendum website. And um, I think he can start introducing his, um, his uh, endeavor and his uh, goals with this movement and <laughs> what this is all about. Um, hi, my name is Mark. Um, I'm 28 years old and I'm from a small town called Ulot in the northern region of Catalonia. And uh, yes, this last Sunday I was in the polling station of my neighborhood and I was a uh, voluntary helping um, the people who were trying to vote there because since we have this, we had this system, this electronic system for registering every person who was voting by using their IDs, I was making sure that the connection was successful and that we could use this electronic system. And I was just collaborating and uh, being part of it and leaving it all day. Yeah. And uh, Mark, wh what are your general goals with this movement and uh, what are the Catalan people trying to say with their protests today? Um, with today's protest, it's basically against the violence that our people received last Sunday just for trying to express their rights, the right to decide, the right to vote, the right to express uh, freely. The loop. And as well, it's about democracy because we supposedly live in a democratic country, but instead of allowing us to express, to, to hear people's voices, they charge against these people. They use police brutality with no mercy at all against these people who were trying to vote and defending the polling stations specifically with their arms raised and trying to not to allow this police brutality to stall the urns, the ballot papers, just to defend the people, the right to decide. And Mark, can you explain a little bit what, what is the background? Why, why do the people of Catalonia want to secede? Why do they want to get away from the government from, of uh, Madrid, from Spain? Um, well, this is a long story, but um, in general, I can tell you that Catalan people want, wants to, want to um, live in a to have a dignified life, to live in a better conditions, to be respected. And the point is what the whole world saw this last Sunday on the news. This, all this police brutality, all this rights violation. It, during the last years, Spain's government was doing the same, like politically, using the courts, the law and in many, many ways possible without using the violence until this last Sunday. And people want basically to, to be free because after this last Sunday, it's obvious that it's not a democracy anymore. And, but uh, I have to tell you that all this movement started when we Catalans um, built and approved our constitution for our region and after being approved by our people in a referendum, in official referendum, respected by, by Spain, they they brought this this our referendum approved by our people to the Spanish courts and they said that it was illegal and they cut many of our rights there. Then was when people start thinking in what kind of democracy, of, in what kind of country we are living, that they don't respect people's decision. And yeah, then the economical crisis started and the economical numbers were 
popping out in in the news and people start thinking yeah maybe we should do something and try to build our own country this is one of the thing that triggered all this movement like it was in around 2010 so this fight has already been going on for a lot of time right it's, it didn't just happen overnight it's already a lot of years that catalans are trying to um get their get their uh, voice heard in the world and uh, just recently through the violence on the streets uh, the world is actually noticing what is happening here and this is actually rather sad that people have to go through this bloodshedding through this violence and through um yeah through through this kind of struggle just to uh, go go outside there to make their voice heard i mean um you would expect that um you, you could actually um have your free opinion and uh you wouldn't have this right uh, this kind of um interruption from the side of the government but yeah as we can see today um governments are uh, cracking down even on, on peaceful, uh, not even protesters, but people who just want to vote. Like, I have never seen something like this in the world before that, uh, okay, I can tell you like my story of Sunday, what I've seen. So, um, people had to sleep uh, two days just to keep the um, places where the ballot boxes are open because else the police would just shut down these places and you wouldn't be able to vote. And um, there would have to be at least 50 people in, in front of the ballot boxes in order for the local police not to confiscate uh, the ballot box. And apart from that, um, after the people came there to vote, many times the national police or the national guard came to seize the ballot boxes and people were trying to defend the ballot box. So um, the, the independistas, the people who fight for the Catalan independence, they didn't initiate any violence at all. And you can see this in all of the videos that are being shared on social media. Um, they even raised their hands, showing that they would never initiate any, any form of violence. And just for starting to sing the hymn, the, the anthem, or uh, even just uh, not doing anything, the National Guard would use their um, sticks and just uh, hit them and uh, like many people were even like close to death and le left on the grounds unconscious and just the protesters were trying to help them. The police completely ignored that. And um, yet it didn't happen in just one city. It happened in all of the villages and all of the cities of Catalonia at the same time. And people everywhere had to really defend every single vote. It's crazy. Like how, 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 how fucked up is the society that uh, you, you have to fight with your life just to, to have a valid vote? I mean, you can see in what kind of times we're living. Uh, Suzanne, you're muted. Uh, yeah, we can see this now all over the world. Um, people are trying to bring change to the country or others are trying to bring change to the country and they have to suffer from those changes like for instance, a lot of people were unhappy with Brexit in the UK or the Trump election in the US. Uh, last year, there were massive protests in South Korea. This year, and last year in Romania. Um, just now, we're seeing Venezuela being a, a horrible disaster where people are trying to flee from. Governments all over the world, nation states, are trying to grab power from people who as you said, Mark, are simply trying to express their own opinion, right? To, to vote. So I, I think we have come to a stage in the world where we should stop trying to simply ask governments for permission to be free because they are obviously not, it's not in their interest always to grant us freedom. And even if it wasn't their interest, they don't seem capable or interested in it right so i think we should just go ahead without voting without asking for anyone's permission and just create our own structures and reclaim what's rightfully ours the right to live our own life to make our own decisions in life so um mark you mentioned that the people of catalonia have written a constitution Let's have a look at the Constitution and let's put it on the blockchain. 
And based on that constitution, let's create a decentralized, borderless, voluntary nation, which uh, is a <clears throat> uh, uncomfortably long name for a short acronym, DBVN, <laughs> which is basically a peer-to-peer -peer nation where people can be self-governing and it's powered by the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so first, let's have a look at the constitution. Mark, do you have it? Uh, can you share share uh, share it on a link? Um, can you talk? Can you describe it in a few words? But I don't have it in front of uh, on my screen. Should I have it? Uh, no, we can we can have a long session later on about the constitution more specifically. But maybe you can summarize in a sentence or two, what the basic comments of the Constitution was. Well, basically, I mean, you have to, like, people should try to understand that we came from a really hard dictatorship, 40-year dictatorship. And, um, yeah, there was a Spanish Constitution approved on the 1978, and there was as well a Catalan constitution back in that time, but there there was a need, like people claimed for that, and politicians answered about the fact that this this card of rights needed to be updated, and that's a claim that it never happened in Spain. It's one one of the reasons they claim that we are not following the rules by celebrating this referendum because they are still appealing all the time to the the Spanish constitution from the 78. So we updated this card, which basically was trying to be more modern, more in favor of the people, more social, more, more in favor of recognizing the Catalan nation without trying to, to step over any other nation. And as well, trying to get more right, like to be more autonomous, because it has been always the claim of Catalan people to rule themselves. And that was the basic claim of this Catalan constitution, we call it a statute. <coughs> and yeah, it was sadly devastated by the Spanish court and, and uh, Spanish uh, politicians. <clears throat> okay, excellent. Thank you. So, um, I think it's fair to establish that the most important tenant of any voluntary nation and its constitution is the right to freely be able to join and exit. Right? That is voluntary. So, that is the first thing we establish the right to enter and exit. Perfect. Yeah. Then, um, so when you create a nation, you have a couple of different things that you have to think about, that you have to decide. So uh, one of the things is obviously your basic, your, you know, the basic stuff like your name, um, where you're located, if you're physically located or digitally located, who you're catered to, etc. And then you have to establish what decision-making mechanism you have. Some people prefer democracy, some people prefer autocracy, <laughs> theocracy, uh, holocracy, yeah. whichever, right? It's yeah. important process. Yeah. And then you have to establish what code of law you have. Yeah. Uh, if you want civil law, common law, Sharia law, competing yeah. code of law, that's also an option. Yeah. Or no code of law at all, and that would be up to each citizen yeah. each, uh, yeah. opportunity to choose for himself. And then you also have to establish um, what services you offer. So this uh, sounds, you know, people say, oh, a government, what does the government do? So what does the government actually do? If you look at a government, their most important job is to provide security and jurisdiction for its citizens. There are a lot of other services the government can offer, which are non-essential, such as, let's say, healthcare, education, etc. But those are not 
part of the business of the software. But you have to think carefully about the services you want to offer, if you should offer them yourself, or if you should hire outside contractors to offer them, etc. And then you have to figure out your financial model. How do you sustain yourself? Do you use a taxation model? In that case, how much do you tax? Do you use a taxation model? Uh, do you make people pay for service? Uh, do you use do you sell something else to other people that that sustains your revenue and your services that you offer uh, to, to citizens to subscribe? So you have to think about all of those things very carefully um, before you start to form your nation. Um, I have put together everything in a document which I will share in the hangout comments after the hangout about. The basics to think about them. But first, if you can, with all this in mind, then tell me, Mark, just in kind of very broad strokes, what would be your ideal Catalonia, your paradise Catalonia? How would it be managed? What services would they offer? How would it be financed? Speak freely. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so from my point of view, um, our dream of an independent Catalonia, so my dream of an independent Catalonia would be a, a country where every person is respected, no matter where they come from, how do they feel about their political, yeah, about politics, about um, beliefs, about sexuality, about anything. It's would be a really respectful country where the most um, the most like the people with more problems would be always the ones where who would get the more help and try to get a society as mo as much equal as possible. So you wouldn't have any, um, like, you would allow freely for immigration from all over the world, for instance? Yeah, we, we believe in a model of open borders. Okay. And, um, yeah, I mean, most of our people believe in, I would say, yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, if you think of which was the biggest demonstration about welcoming refugees in the whole Europe. It happened in Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia. Yes. And we did that because actually we want to take them, we want to help them. But Spanish government says it's unconstitutional. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, maybe that's a deal to do with the European Union and all other European countries saying that has been a different host of refugees. They're win Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, our people suffered a civil war, mm. and they were they they were um, traveling around Europe, in France, and other countries, and people were helping them. And now we have the same situation, and in some way, we all are guilty about these wars. It seems that people or governments don't want to help these people, which are really <laughs> needy this time, in a really unfair and hard situation. Okay. Um, so in terms of how would it be done, what decision making? Democracy, um, I have to say that one of our claims is definitely democracy. We want a really participative democracy where people would, not like now that we, we are voting for a government every four years, and then there's almost no voting, no referendums, no elections in between at all, and they decide and they make their own rules. We want a participative democracy where people are deciding constantly about what they want to do with their lives, 
if they lost rules with the system because it's about the people this the revolution we are living wouldn't it would never happen without the people it wasn't about the politicians like people pushed these politicians mm. yeah Okay. Maybe I can also add some things, um, because I've also realized that, of course, all of the people are fighting together now for the independence of Catalonia, but inside of the independence movement, there's also different streams, like there's the more socialist, there's more right wing, there's more liberal ones, and there's no, also no ideal Catalonia state that's gonna, that we're gonna have after, if we get the independence, because also, people will still continue fighting after that because there's different interests. But with the uh, with the DBVN, with the decentralized borderless voluntary nation, um, all of them could create, let's say, their own Catalonia. You know, like uh, more socialist virtual Catalonia, or a more um, liberal one, or uh, I don't know, ones that don't want to have um, have anything to do with the refugees. Like um, there's different streams inside of this, and of course, I know. Um, that it would lead to, let's say, segregation. But at the same time, um, you shouldn't forget that um, these struggles basically let the people in power reign. Because, like, we, the normal people, we fight amongst each other while they they can do whatever they want and we can see us with Rajoy and with the Spanish government. Uh, probably most people in Spain, they're not okay with the violence that happened here on Sunday. But because people are just fighting amongst each other with their political ideals, they, they're not able to, to focus on these things and they just let the people that are in charge to do whatever they want. And you see the flaws of our representative democracy, democratic model in this point in time. And um, yeah, so so the only opportunity to get out of this perpetual conflict of fighting against each other for no reason at all, uh, we could create our own nations with like-minded people, our virtual DPVNs, um, to start focusing on what we can do, like constructively, like uh, to to um, use our resources to build something new instead of uh, just fighting against each other. We're we're wasting a lot of time. Uh, trying to convince each other of what is right, but we will actually never achieve consensus because that's how humans are. You, you have different opinions. We're not all the same. We're not like, yeah, we're not equal. <laughs> we're, we, we are like equal in, the, in front of law. That, that's like one thing that I uh, think is good, uh, but we're, we're not equally born and we, we don't have the same opinions. So we're like, uh, just because of that, we should have the chance to um like have different forms of society because uh, people are different inherently and that's a good thing right it would be exceptionally boring if we were all the same um <laughs> i mean who would want that right uh, instead of yeah. trying to agree on something we should celebrate disagreement constant disagreement right? um, yeah, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. So, give a little bit of a background on what Eric just said. Um, <laughs> to quickly summarize where we are coming from, Bit Nation. Oh, yeah, you as the world's first voluntary virtual nation, providing actual service. Uh, we have um, worked a lot of software with classes of people, a public notary that is based on things like marriage, title, wills, business agreement, loan agreements, all of that. And we have more than 10 years We have a uh, cooperation with our public notary with the government of Estonia, their e residency. Um, so basically, the first service on the here is indeed a way to create your own nation. So, um, we have to help people that that we are already on our current website, which is not here. People have all, over 200 nations. 
great nation. Everything from uh, Mongolia Empire to the um, people wanting to share things that are said. Um, yeah, it's a very exciting development, and I think it's, it's a worldwide movement because even if we live in a small country, even if we live only in, let's say, an apartment building, we might not want to agree with everyone in that specific apartment building, right? And we should celebrate these agreements. We should be able, to feel a voice, we should strive to have agency, agency to create our own options to live as we want without asking the permission or getting the consensus from anyone, a nation state, uh, 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 you know, inter international state, or even our neighbors or city or whatever. So, uh, on that note, um, we want to help you design Catalonia to basically a voluntary nation that people can opt into. If they don't like it, then they simply don't opt in. If they like it, but not exactly as it's shaped, they can choose to easily fork it, copy it, and create their own variation that is to their specific liking. Right? So there can be hundreds of competing Catalonias, each catering to every specific taste and preference. Or there can be just one, if one takes market dominance, like let's say um, Facebook have done in the world of, um, you know, have taken dominance in the world of social networks, <coughs> that's fine too. Um, so anyway, so, so in order to create unification, first you have to agree on those couple of things, whether you want to just do it yourself or if you want to find a group of people to do it with, like, for instance, some core members within the movement, uh, or maybe you want to choose people who are more technical um, as well. Then the consensus and that conversation around it, um, and then start doing it. How does that sound? Should we go ahead with it? Should we create a voluntary opt-in Catalonia to Alma? What do you think? Uh, Mark, you need to switch on your microphone. Mark? Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like... What you're proposing, it, it involves a lot of participation, right? So I don't see this idea that far about the participative democracy that we are willing for. So yeah, definitely. And I mean, especially that people, I mean, if there was one thing during this last three days that felt like three weeks, actually, because a lot happened, it was that people were communicating all day using social networks, um, messengers like WhatsApp, Facebook, wherever. It was crazy, like sharing information all the time, all day. And you can see that people from all ages are involved. It's definitely like digital revolution is happening and definitely this big nation idea yeah um, it's a good proposal yeah for sure all right then so let's get the party started all right so first question name what do you want to call yourself um, like, should I name it something differently than then? <laughs> it can be anything you want. It's it's it could be the unicorn state of Catalonia, or I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. But but I liked your the name you you put on on this event, like Catalonia 2.0. For example, uh, like right. an insurance company, you know, like um, instead of having the, the whole bulk of the government, you provide certain services that is possible to provide uh, virtually. 
you know, like dispute resolution, contracts, citizenship. Um, but for example, you don't need to provide things like um, military defense or something like that. I mean, that's not, not realistic for a virtual nation, at least not at the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. So you, you should think of it more as of providing um, certain things that you're uh, good at providing in. Uh, and um, in general, like um, people will be able to have different citizenships or be part of different virtual nations. So maybe they will want to use um, your dispute resolution because maybe you have a really good system, but uh, maybe they would like to have uh, be part of a different nation system or a good health insurance or whatever so um, just think of it as um, yeah basically um, a global a governance service provider that is yeah non-geographic so yeah you can provide the same services like governments do but without having uh, to, to just adhere to a specific territory or stuff like that you can provide the same services also outside of Catalonia if you want you know so uh, basically, it's it's like an international insurance company offering their services to anyone. Mm. But it can also be local. However, uh, there is nothing preventing anyone from starting a voluntary nation to, for instance, help govern a small local community. Let's say um, an apartment block, right, or an apartment building, or a family even, or um, like a self-serving commune or something like that. It's it's also uh, perfectly possible to use it's a very local governance tool, not just as a um, you know, digital. People always ask me the question, uh, saying, well, so this is all digital then? And I'm like, what do you mean it's all digital? Yeah, we use technology to build it. That's the question. But it's like if I order food online, is the food that I order also digital because I happen to order it online? Obviously not. If I order, um, you know, a uh, you know, chicken tandoori online, and I receive the chicken tandoori and eat it, then it's not digital, right? So I, I have a hard time sometimes to see what people make that decision what is digital and what is real life. Right? Um, so, so the answer is it can be anything, it's both digital and you know, local. Um, so in Catalonia, obviously, it is really rather local since since it's a defined territorial party. Uh, but I imagine there's also a Catalonian diaspora uh, spread around the world who also take an interest in evolution in Catalonia. But it's both, in a way, uh, both global and local, right? <laughs> Um, sorry, can you repeat the last question? It was so nice. So in this case, in the case of Catalonia, it's both uh, global and local in the sense that it's obviously a local territory, but it's also, a, <clears throat> I mean, it's a global community. There are a lot of Catalonians who live outside of Catalonia, but it still identifies with Catalonia and might want the governance services be part of a Catalonian nation, right? Yeah, that's right. Actually, here we have like what we say, the two sides of the coin, like we have this local, like small business, mm. the towns, little shops, and as well we have companies or bigger companies that they, most of their economy is based on exportation. Yeah, definitely. Mm. What was that the question was about? Uh, not really, but that's fine. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, uh, well, what I meant is to say, based on what Eric said, that you can provide your governance services for people in Catalonia, but you can also provide it on a global market for governance services. For a voluntary nation, Catalonia to you, uh, becomes a really attractive voluntary nation. Someone in, let's say, South Africa or um, you know, or Netherlands or wherever else, Germany could also uh, use your services. There's nothing stopping you from, from providing your services and your nation to people outside of your geographic area where you happen to reside and cater to. So there is a lot of growth potential there, you know, if you want to make a career out of it. Um, <laughs> 
Okay, so we have established a name, we have established whether it's uh, local or digital, and it's both. Um, so we have established the decision making, making mechanism, which is um, democracy and probably some form of direct democracy from the South Africa, uh, which we will dig deeper into in the next session. Um, Okay, so how about the code of law? Sorry, what about the? The code of law, which code of law do you want to? It's like um, you can have the, the like um, normal law, you, you can have like common law or you can have the Sharia, you know, like there's all types of laws and governments all over the world. And you, you have to realize that you can have your code of law. It's not something you're forced to live in just because you're born in one place. Exactly. So that's also one important realization for virtual nations, that you choose the law that people want to adhere to. Of course, once you established it, it's, it should be something fixed that's not so flexible. Like you, you should stick to your rules, let's say. But it's also something that can change over time. And it's probably um, not as uh, bureaucratic as the constitution of Spain, for example. Exactly. So, um, I guess now it's uh, in Spain, uh, you're using civil law traditionally, right? Or is it common? Yeah. yeah. The civil I, I mean, I, I'm not an expert about law at all, but I would say, yeah, that's civil law. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you create a new nation from scratch, hmm? Um, it's probably better to choose common law, actually, uh, because common law is a lot more flexible and innovative than civil law. The, the basic principle of civil law is basically you create a law and that law stays that there forever and has to be followed but very to the point while in common law it's the latest case that sets a precedent, so the law continuously evolved for every new case you have. So it's a more evolutionary model. Um, Maybe a general question here. Um, if I build my own DBVN, my own virtual nation, um, will I have some support with this kind of questions? Because I suppose there are many people who yeah, have this kind of ideas or want to create their nation, but are not legal experts. So I suppose that there could also be some uh, consultancy on the side of the BitNation team. Yeah, I mean, first of all, we can do regular hangouts. I definitely think that's a job for the ambassador network. And um, second, yeah, I mean, obviously we need to do tutorials and stuff like that. There is already a little bit of that online, which I will come to uh, in a little bit um, by the end of this session. And then, yeah, anyone who wants to do private consultancy on the site to help acquire nation founders uh, are you know, more than welcome to do so. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> so let's say, so for the code of law uh, and the speed resolution system and everything, let's leave that up to next session to think about more granularly, that's definitely an area we need to work more on. Um, so maybe you can ask around start keeping civil law or civil code or if people want to change to common law or have competing codes of law, that's also an option, uh, so that everyone can choose their own code of law when they enter into a contract, um, which is also an option that we will provide on PNGN, of course. And, um, okay. Second to look at the next question. Okay, so how do people enter and exit. And you mentioned earlier that you are for open borders and anyone can join. Okay, so no barriers to entry. So you just have to apply and they get automatically approved. Yeah. Okay, and how do they exit? Same thing? They just say sign off? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I can imagine any reason to stop them to leave if they want to leave. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, and then how about the economic model? How are you intending to, to finance the governance services? You should pay for it. How are you going to collect money? Uh, is financially sustainable? Are you planning to have your own currency? Are you planning to um, join the euro or... Um, like like in this digital one or in the in the in the current one like in the current movement what people say uh well both one should reflect the other right mm. yeah 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 so um people definitely want to keep the euro because it's um pretty easy way to to use the same currency and move around and yeah, I mean, that's the thing actually I noticed. This, this is my personal uh, experience, like two years. And I noticed that it's really hard to pay using a debit or credit card or a German card because don't have the machines and people that are more used to use um, paper money and, and coins and so on. And yeah so um i think i mean i mean since people are in in different countries are still using i think it's it's always easier to keep the same the same currency but yeah definitely future it's pointing to use digital money yeah the, the, like the direction you you are pr proposing yeah for sure okay so um i mean in terms of being uh, kind of realistic and how you can create something which have which is easily fungible meaning you can use it to buy or sell something um digital currencies is definitely the way to go it's it's by far the easiest option so maybe you want to create, I can definitely see why people would want to create physical money too, for the sake of anonymity actually. Cash is very good, and, uh, I mean, like physical cash is very good. But uh, I think as a start, it's better to aim for a digital currency first. And so, okay, that's good. That's added to the list of what we need for the DBDN code. Um, Okay, so I think we covered all the basics now. I will send you a summary of this so you can discuss it more in detail. And then during the next session, we will write it up into an Ethereum smart contract. Um, that will. Are you. It's okay, so let me backtrack. Sorry. How familiar are you with Ethereum? Uh, with the blockchain technology? Um, actually. I read an article like some months ago, like skimming, like really briefly. And and after it, until like the, our referendum, like Eric sent me a, a, um, an article and I read about it. And then the next day I realized how this was working because I made the comparison with peer-to-peer -peer networks that are used to use or, or uh, um, at least we use it in our lives, so to say. Uh, what, what Mark is mentioning here is that um, basically the Catalan government, instead of using their cent centralized servers for uh, registering for the referendum, um, enabled uh, IPFS database, basically, where um, it's, which couldn't be uh, cracked down by the Spanish government because actually they forced the um the the ministry of uh, informatics of catalonia to shut down exactly on these days so they they wouldn't be able to offer this uh, service of online reg registry um but instead they found a way to do this through ipfs nodes and um 
important because this way it is uh, decentralized all over the world and you couldn't, uh, let's say, just by having Spain ask another government to shut down, let's say, the, the server of, let's say, in, uh, .io, which is British, or uh, .co, which, which is Colombian, or whatever, they wouldn't be able to ask, uh, like, just one government to shut down this website, and then the uh, referendum couldn't take place, because um, this database it would be distributed amongst thousands of nodes all over the world, and you, you couldn't uh, attack them all at the same time. So that's actually one of the showcases how uh, blockchain did already help to um, to let people here in Catalonia claim their independence by offering them to, to save their uh, databases without being cracked down by the Spanish government. It always baffles me how it's all the situations of um, revolution of, of hardship, which prompts solutions of extreme resilience, right, which really strengthen the people and caters to create and employ innovative solutions. Um, so this is a perfect opportunity, really. Uh, and IPFS is also, by the way, something that we are using for Pangea. It's a large part of our code base and that we're using for our communications protocols, etc. Okay. Yes. Maybe I can also add something for Mark, like uh, you mentioned before smart contracts. I believe Mark is not familiar with smart contracts yet. Um, so the idea is that instead of having a contract uh, written on paper, you could uh, write a contract digitally, which is already predetermined between the participants of this contract, and um, it would be executed automatically by a protocol. So there would be no um, possibility for people to forge or manipulate or, let's say, hack the contract because it's on a blockchain. Essentially, um, all the data and code and protocols that are written on top of a blockchain are distributed amongst all of these, uh, let's say, servers all around the world. Um, and in order to change anything inside of these contracts, you would need to have at least 51% of the whole computing power of this network, which is basically, uh, let's say, not, not realistic for such small thing like contract. Um, so you, you would write the smart contract and um, the, the things that you determined the, uh, with your partner or, or your uh, business partner, um, they will be executed automatically whether uh, you like it or not. Let's say it's, it's written on the blockchain and you can't change it anymore. Nowadays, people are working on upgrading smart contracts, but we will see how that works out. But at the moment, smart contracts are something thing that are like written in stone. You know, you, you have this contract and it's shared all over the world and it's going to be like that. Um, so the idea of having this unflexibility is that you can um, offer services with your virtual nation that cannot be hacked or changed by the outside. It's going to stay like this. And this is the, uh, also something very important for uh, governance and for, for, let's say, providing a nation that you have stability. And this can be provided by smart contracts. Exactly. It's immutable, transparent. Um, it can't it can't be tampered with them, as opposed to normal government records. So. <clears throat> so anyway, so we only have six minutes left of the session this week. Uh, let's continue next week. And so we have identified three areas that we need to discuss more in depth. Um, the governance decision. Uh, well, no. Okay. So direct democracy. We need to define a little bit more how exactly you want to fine tune that. How that should be done. We we'll also need to discuss what code of law uh, you want to use and how you're going to do your arbitration and contract enforcement. And we have to discuss your financial, your revenue model. How you're going to be financially sustainable. Right? You don't need to make profit. You can be non-profit, but you need to be financially sustainable. Um, so let's uh, dedicate next week's episode to basically make the general framework of the smart contract for the DBDM and discuss one of these topics. Um, I, I would suggest we start with the decision-making process. 
And uh, Mark, is there anything else you want to say to the world, let's say, representing the people of Catalonia right now? Um, I just want to say that all nations have the right to be respected and to be heard. And all nations have the right to decide. And all the world should keep that in mind, despite of any law, any court, any government. Like the power is in people's hands. They should have this in mind. Mm -hmm. And not just nations, but also individuals, right? Yeah, right. I agree, definitely. Yeah, a nation, after all, is just a collection of individuals. So, right. freedom, that's all we want. No more freedom. <laughs> so that's creative. Hmm? Yeah. All right, so now we have the basis. Um, in uh, the comments on YouTube, I will post a summary and we will start creating a smart contract for it. And next week we will discuss more fine-tuned each one of the areas that we need to come up with. And if you can get people engaged in that conversation uh, around you so you get more input from different people who might have different and differentiating opinions, you know, that would be brilliant. Yeah, it would also be interesting to Thank have um, people with different ideas of how Catalonia should look like, you know, that they could have already competing uh, virtual Catalonias, you know? Indeed. Yep, that would be good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Jaffi, do you want to say All right. finishing words? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you very much, guys.